Everybody's talking at me. CRN Digital Talk Radio, the original talk back with Chuck Wilder. Paul Stern at the toll-free number, 1-800-336-2225, 1-800-336-2225. We're live across America on this radio station or this cable system and around the world at www.crntalk.com. Today, a happy birthday to George Putnam, the originator of Talk Back. Going to check in with Sal Conlon in just a little bit and hear some of George, too. Also, Jane McGrath, CNS News. The United States has spent over... $400,000 to teach Chinese meditation to cocaine addicts. Bob Unruh, news editor for World Net Daily, his article, Obama, Married Saboteur in Chief. Uh, also, Rick Oatman is going to be here for the second hour, co-hosting with me as we discuss the life of Terry Anderson. D.A. King will be with us. Uh, we'll be playing an interview with Terry Anderson, and we encourage you to call in and participate the second hour at that toll-free number, 1-800-336-2225. George Putnam, born July 14, 1914, American television news reporter, talk show host, based in Los Angeles, known for his catchy phrase, see you at 10, see you then, at the close of his broadcast news. Uh, he was born in Breckenridge, Minnesota. Radio career began at WDGY, Minneapolis. By the 1950s, he had switched to television, hosted the highest-rated newscast in the Los Angeles area. He anchored all four of L.A.'s major independent stations. Uh, for his contribution to the television industry, uh, George has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, late Ted Knight stated that he used Putnam in part in his role model for the Ted Baxter character in the 1970s television series, The Mary Tyler Moore Show on CBS, participated in the Rose Parade, I believe it was from 1951 until the year 2000. In 2008, uh, George took part in a special 94th birthday show right here on this station. And upon Putnam's passing, the L.A. Times recalled the words of former President Richard M. Nixon. He said, quote, some people didn't like what he said, some people liked what he said, but everybody listened to George Putnam. Well, why don't we listen right now as George was interviewing Joe DeLayden. He was with the Midwest Coalition. You know, George, one of his number one subjects and goals was the battle, the invasion, of the illegal aliens. Let's listen to this. Let's talk for a moment about excessive immigration and the discrimination against blacks and whites. Now, I didn't meet Booker T. Washington. I missed him. After all, he was in 1895. He was born there. But I did interview George Washington Carver. What a delightful, wondrous man he was. I was just a kid. I couldn't have been older than, no, 24 years of age at the time. But he made an impassioned plea to white businessmen to begin to hire and to train blacks. And he argued that it was absurd to bring in immigrants and ignore the huge pool of labor available in America to those of the white race who look to the incoming of those of foreign birth and strange tongues and habits for the prosperity, the prosperity of the South. Here's what Booker T. Washington said. Cast down your bucket where you are. <laughs> he clearly saw the two alternatives facing the South, later the entire United States of America. He said, we shall constitute one-third or more of the ignorance and the crime of the South, or one-third its intelligence and progress. We shall contribute one-third to the business and industrial prosperity of the South, or we shall prove a veritable body of death stagnating, depressing, retarding every effort to advance the body politic. And then came Frederick Douglass. He also recognized the relationship between immigration and the plight of the blacks. But you don't have to go back that far. Go right here to South Los Angeles to my dear friend Terry. Terry Anderson. Terry Anderson, an outstanding citizen, a patriotic American citizen, happened to be born with a little color than myself. I want to tell you about him. He said, George, drywalling in our part, drywalling has been eliminated and taken over by the illegal aliens. 
The illegals have poured in here and our kids can't get a job. Our kids who wanted to go on to college can't get that in-between job. They can't get a job. <gasps> They're taken over by the illegal aliens. And they've been paying them slave labor, $5.50, <gasps> instead of the 15 or 20 or even more. So it's happening right now and today. Let's talk about what it's doing to black America, decent citizens in America. Do it right now, Joe. Yes, I, I too, in this area, I've talked to the Black America or the African American uh, Contractors Association, and these are small-time contractors, uh, usually yep. uh, blacks, yep. that were just trying, after civil rights went out in '64, trying to get their their act together and establish, you know, that middle-class value system and that middle-class work ethic for themselves and their children, and now they find out that they can't compete. Right. in the marketplace right. with some guy coming in and working for four, five, six dollars an hour. They want to pay their employees a decent living wage. Hold they it right can. there, Joe. We have want to continue with this. I want to talk about union janitors right here in Los Angeles. What a story you tell. Don't go away. His name is Joe Delighton, Midwest Coalition to Reform Immigration. CRN Digital Talk. Putnam here. Talk back. Take a break. Yep, reliving another great moment from George Putnam in his interview with Joe Delighton, Midwest Coalition on Immigration. Right now, I want to bring in Sal Conlon, George's associate, writer, producer, companion, and I got to tell you, this lady is the one person who knew him best. Sal, how are you doing? Hi there. We met 54 years ago today, his 41st birthday. I was 21. We became inseparable companions. And I have to state first, he was against NAFTA, GATT, and the New World Order years ago before anybody else was seeing what was going to happen to our country. He was ahead of his time always. And, and you remember, he's the one that coined the pr uh, phrase, uh, the invasion yes. of America. Yes. And he was himself at all times. And to him, his next breath was the most important thing, so he could get a lot done. He was opinionated, Absolutely. confident, curious, and bossy, compassionate, caring, not ashamed to shed a tear or apologize, innovative, and surprising. And if they didn't realize, the difference in his newscasting, aside from his excellent writing, was he did the news in present tense. And he was a superb writer as well. And he was the first to have the news audience talking back. Uh -huh, His voice absolutely. was incomparable. He could do oratory, poetry. The script could blow away. It, he could have one. He couldn't have one. He could do anything. He was utter perfection. He was spectacular, and it was heartfelt. And he never charged a speaking fee. His money was where his mouth is. Always, yes, absolutely. He never had a fee for any of the speeches. He didn't go on the circuit and do any of that. And as a North Dakota farm boy, his grandpa was sheriff. And he was an athlete, boat lover, natural horseman, animal lover, as well as crusades for the people. And his crusades for the people were his life and devotion. He saved the Hughes Flying Boat, the White Fence Gang Youth Awards, Accentuate the Positive, the NAACP and Urban League. He was so proud of his, the Indians. He was Chuck's come voice of thunder. Uh -huh. He helped the captive nations, the Hungarian freedom fighters. He was the first to speak up in the Six-Day War for Israel, has an Israel State Medal and a grove of, of trees in the John Kennedy Peace Forest, and animal cruelty saving the burrows. He was um, such a variety. You wonder, you wonder how he had time to do radio and television. Absolutely. With all his other <laughs> adventures. He was and the then, youngest. And then hollering at you and I, too, yes, you know, in the midst he, of it all. Yes. He was opinionated, you, uh, <laughs> and he was a champion debater, and he was himself. And uh, the Eagle Scouts, he was the youngest member of the Boy Scouts of America, and he was also with the Sons of the Pioneers, and uh, Roy Rogers as their announcer, and uh, person. In, in, and he was in seven movies as himself. 